So look, I've wasted probably 100 hours vibe coding the wrong way, and today I wanna to share 10 things that would have saved me about 100 hours of time. So number one, so all right, the first thing, and this took me too long to figure out, is finding the sweet spot with your prompts. So I found that not being lazy in your prompting will get you way better results. Number two, the second thing is using screenshots. The models are actually good enough now to interpret this visual information. And I can't tell you how many times I've personally tried to describe a layout in words when a simple screenshot would have solved it immediately. So number three, and this is for all the overthinkers and perfectionists out there, just start building stuff. So don't overthink this. Don't spend weeks preparing. Don't watch 50 tutorials before you write your first prompt. So number four, community involvement. So I personally watch a ton of YouTube videos and I follow you know different creators that are vibe coders and there's some really great ones out there. Number five, this is a tough lesson I learned. This is, I learned the hard way on this and this is all about version control. It's absolutely essential. So some of these tools, they don't natively do version control very well. So I version every single time I fork and I version right in the title of the project or the fork. So just keep organized with this stuff. Number six is debugging. So this is different with AI generated code I found, and I'm not a developer myself, but I, I'm familiar with debugging. So either in the console or right in the UI itself, include this in your initial prompts. So number seven is, is, is all about saving yourself from insanity basically. So if the AI can't get something right in three attempts, and that's, I, I, I try to stick by this, you need to change your approach entirely. Number eight, and this relates to version control thing. I gotta be careful how I say this. Fork early and fork often. <laughs> when your project gets too large, it's important to fork it, to duplicate it. Number nine, and, and this is a big one, use third-party services for complex systems. So things like payment processing, authentication, email delivery, use things like Stripe, Clerk, SendGrid, just don't try to recreate these with vibe coding. Number 10, and this is a mindset shift, and it was a mindset shift for me as well, which is think in components and not applications. So for me, successful vibe coding is about assembling pieces, not building this giant application. So build your app as like connected components. So look, those are my 10 tips for vibe coding. So thanks for joining me on the AI Strategy Lab, and we'll talk soon.